they go. Big House again here. Listen, when you're studying the Ho-Chunk Indians, or Winnebagos, as they were later known, do not leave without looking up Chief Redbird. Uh, this photo was taken, and he was identified as a Cheyenne in 1927. But understand that he's also been identified as Cherokee, Ho-Chunk, Winnebago, uh, you name it. As he was one of, he was the leader that was the friendliest towards the settlers of the time. This would easily get the uh, stereotype of the Indians having the big feathered headdresses, that the feathers stood up in the Midwest. That was possible because there weren't as many trees to get caught in. The Iroquois and especially the Mohawks were all runners. They were never horse riders ever. And they would had their feathers, uh, wore them basically down because they ran everywhere they could go and you didn't want those big feathers running through the woods getting caught in everything. But here is the chief again in full ceremonial uh, dress. Now here's a historical marker I found for Chief Redbird, who was a legendary Cherokee Indian chief. Um, so they identify him as all kinds of things for whom this fork in the Kentucky River was named. He and another Indian, Jack, whose name was given Creek to the south, were friendly with earlier settlers and permitted them to hunt in the areas. Allegedly, they were killed in the battle protecting their furs and the bodies were thrown into the river here. So it's a sacred place. The ledges bear meeting attributed to Redbird. So do not leave the Ho-Chunk investigation without seeing Redbird. And again, Chief Redbird, as you would see him in a full ceremonial outfit. This is Big House saying, study Chief Redbird.